Hey everyone, welcome to my first outdoor video project for the year. Today I'm gonna to be updating you on the work I did to my lawn last fall, show you the results of that work. I'll go over what I've done this year to keep the lawn consistently improving, covering basics like mowing, watering, and controlling weeds. Then we're gonna do some work to repair remaining bare spots. Also throughout the video, I'm gonna be answering your questions that you left on my first two yard work videos. But stay till the very end because I'm gonna give you all a sneak peek at what my family has planned for our yard. Backyard, front yard, all of it. It's gonna be super unique and super awesome. All right, let's get started. Let's start off this video with answering two of your questions. First one, Sir M asks, what type of grass do you have? Well, thanks, sir. It is a mix of perennial ryegrass and other types of ryegrass, mostly. Here in the north part of the country, we, are, we have a cool season grass, type of grass. So next one, uh, John T. Fake comment asks, Jason, can you now make a seamless transition to you uh, talking about mowing basics? Hey, that's our first segment, John. I'm happy to do that. Let's hard cut to me talking about mowing while mountain biking. Hey, well, thanks for your question, John. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> One of the most important things about mowing your lawn is you wanna make sure that your lawnmower itself is in really good shape. You can do this with some really simple basic steps. First, you wanna change your oil on a regular basis. I just did this recently. Uh, it only took a matter of minutes uh, using an oil extractor. Uh, the oil extractor is not necessary. You do not need to use one if you don't have one. But if you have one, it makes the job really, really quick and clean. My uh, grass clippings, the last time I mowed my lawn, didn't have that nice clean edge that you want to see. And that is a telltale sign of your blade being a little nicked up or dull. Sharpening a lawnmower blade is a simple process. One of the affordable options I like to use is a sharpening stone. If you've got bigger nicks or a little more of a messed up blade, you can also use an angle grinder with a grinding stone. Other than that, I'd say just try to mow as, as often as you can or want to. Right now, since the grass is growing so quickly, I'm mowing about every four or five days. Uh, my perennial ryegrass likes to be right around two and a half inches tall. And another little pro tip for you, I find if I walk at a nice slow pace, my lines are a whole lot straighter. Uh, it's kind of like a Hank Hill version of meditation, I guess. <laughs> <sighs> Why would anyone do drugs when they could just mow a lawn? James Gunn asks, is that your first gen Dodge Ram in the driveway? James, it sure is. If you're interested, I have a whole series of videos called The Old Dodge about that truck, me improving it, working on it, all that stuff. Cat Cruz asks, when should I add sprinklers? Hey, thanks, Kat. I was just about to start the segment on watering. Let's, let's do it. Hey, good morning, everybody. My uh, irrigation sprinklers just kicked on here just right around 7 a.m., and I wanted to answer your questions about watering. So for my particular yard this time of year, I water once a day for about 30 minutes in each zone. How often you're gonna water totally depends on your particular lawn, your particular soil, where you live, how hot it is. It's, um, in here in central Washington, it is pretty dry. Uh, it doesn't rain very often, and if it does ever rain, I delay the watering of the backyard by about 24 hours. Obviously you don't want your grass to be too dry, but you also don't want it to be too much moisture, too much standing water. Then you're going to invite, you know, fungus. So if you start to see a lot of mushrooms, you probably want to dial your watering back. Having an irrigation system like this is a blessing and a curse. The water comes from a canal system, uh, and so the water is very, very dirty. I mean, we, we're talking leaves, sticks, you know, dirt, and occasionally some small fish. <laughs> Gross. Hi. You're stuck in there now. I'm. See you next month. Ugh. The water pressure is provided by a pump that I have located over by my shed, and there is a filter before the water pump to protect the pump, and there's a filter after the pump to protect the sprinkler system. And those filters get dirty pretty quickly, so I clean them about once a month. The system as a whole is also just kind of finicky, right? I mean, it's, I had to fix a burst pipe that happened right when the water turned on. I, I never fixed uh, irrigation pipe before, but I, I figured it out. Did not have to call anybody to come fix it. Hey, but who am I kidding? Having underground sprinklers like this controlled on a timer is awesome. It definitely beats uh, moving a garden hose with a sprinkler around every morning, 
But hey, that's also what I did for about 10 plus years to keep my lawn green before I lived here. So that works too. Grassology4610 asks, what brand of boots are you wearing? Jason explains fashion. <laughs> well, they are from Georgia Boot, and they're actually incredibly comfortable. I, I've seen them lots of places. I think I got these at Tractor Supply. They're pretty common, and they're very comfy, and I like them. I'm on my third year with these ones, and I'll probably get another pair pretty soon. Hagamo Sushi says, my yard doesn't look good right now. It has a lot of bad weeds. Should I put weed eater first? Hagamos, I appreciate it. You, you guys keep helping me here. I'm, I'm just about to start the segment on weeds. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's discuss what we've done so far this year to keep the weeds at bay. First thing we did is I applied some crabgrass preventer. You wanna do this around the time that your soil is starting to get around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. For me, that was actually in the last week of February. It got warm really early this year, so we'll see how, how hot the summer is this year. I'm, I'm super pumped about that. But anyway, yeah, this stuff is from Scott's. It worked great. I applied it with a broadcast spreader. For killing weeds around the perimeter of the yard, which is definitely an issue I'm having. And so I've been using a weed and grass killer. This one is uh, called Kills All. It's a concentrate that you mix with water. You know, you wanna do this on a day that it's not windy because this stuff straight up just kills grass, right? So you wanna use it on a day that there's no breeze, no wind, and you just be very careful and apply it to the edge. Um, I'm gonna get into a little bit more about this later but I'm actually gonna be totally redoing the edging of the, of the whole lawn. And Quick sidebar, if you're interested in how I built these shelves and this workbench here in my garden shed, I have a whole video about that. Not too many people have seen it. It's a really good video, I'm really proud of it. And these things, these shelves are crazy beefy. So in, in case you're interested, that's there for you. So let's talk about the weeds inside, kind of up intermingled with the grass. So this stuff from Spectracide, uh, crabgrass and weed killer concentrate has worked pretty well. I went and I used uh, this applicator right here um, and applied it to the entire uh, lawn about a month ago. Uh, and then also beyond applying it to the entire lawn with a garden hose, you can also use the concentrate and a sprayer, handheld sprayer like this one. So yeah, this stuff has worked pretty well. I'm not sure, you know, tell me in the comments if you know of a better one, but this stuff worked pretty good. You're supposed to wait about a month um, after using this uh, product to then go and try to grow new seed. And so since I wanna do that, but I still have some weeds to deal with, we're gonna be using a cool tool I just picked up. Look at the beam. cool tool, cool, 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 cool tool. This is from Corona. <laughs> timely name, right? <laughs> Super hot right now. Anyway, um, this thing is pretty cool. I just got it. It's supposed to be a kind of a modern version of a granny pick or granny stick. Uh, old, old fashioned tool that you've kind of used to pull weeds out, but also not just to pull the top off, but to get the whole um, uh, root system too. So let's go ahead and see how well this thing works. So what you do with this Corona weed pulling tool is you're supposed to stick it over the weed and st step down. My, my soil's nice and moist here, so turn your handle a couple times and then pull straight out, and there you go. So it does leave quite the little hole here, but because we're gonna be overseeding and we're gonna be applying some topsoil and everything, not too concerned about that at this moment. The other thing you wanna do to make sure to keep weeds down is just to mow often. Uh, if if, if uh, weeds aren't allowed to kind of flower and then spread their seeds more, you're gonna keep the weeds down just by mowing. Even if you don't wanna use uh, chemicals, if you don't wanna use herbicides and you just wanna mow, I mean, That'll, that'll do a lot of good by itself. All right, well, we got a whole bunch more uh, of these little, little sons of guns to uh, remove. You get it. <laughs> Chris Terry asks, that's what you call a yard? Seriously? All that lawn equipment for that spit size yard? Put AstroTurf in and don't waste your time and money. I have three acres of lawn. That's a yard. Sorry, Chris, I was just trying to make a video for people and like, it was big enough. <laughs> I thought it was big enough. This was big enough. 
With all the work we did last fall, my lawn does not need a full dethatching pass like we did last time. Dethatching is a task you do as needed. And usually, at least in the Northwest here, it's usually better to do it in the fall. But if you're just starting out on a new lawn, you know, and you need to do it in the spring, go ahead and do it in the spring. It's a fine time of year to do it. I would just advise you not to do it right in the middle of summer but there are some bare spots that do have some dead material in them. Some have just bare soil. So for those particular areas and just those areas alone, I am gonna be using the Mantis from the first video I did on my lawn and everything back in the day. I'm gonna be using the Mantis uh, cultivator with the dethatcher accessory kit. If you don't have a Mantis like this, which they're awesome and you'll probably see it more and more in future videos, but if you don't have one, no problem, you can just use a rake and do the same thing. It's just more work. Gabriel Gonzalez asks, did you just walk backwards? Yes, the answer is yes. With the uh, Mantis, you do walk backwards, okay? Don't sass me, I know what I'm doing, sort of. Think. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about soil. Ryegrass likes a pH range between 5.8 and 7.4. Peat moss, like the top dressing I used last fall, is a great organic top dressing, but it also naturally lowers the pH levels of soil. So if whatever top dressing we use when we overseed lowers the pH of the soil below 5.8, that could lead to bad results. So this year I'm going to be doing pH testing of the soil in various spots with this tester from Lusterleaf. So, to quote one of the greatest minds of our time, Sir Matthew Damon. I'm gonna have to science the Poopy. out of this. So I went out and collected five different soil samples in five different sections of my lawn. Number one being the part that I thought looked the most healthy. Number two, three, four, and five are all different areas of my lawn and they don't seem to be as lush. All right, let's go ahead and test number one. And we fill to that line right there. You take one of your green capsules here, our ingredients here. We're going to fill the water line now. They recommend distilled water. I didn't have distilled water, but I did have bottled water, so that's what I'm gonna be using. All right, so we shake thoroughly, and now we sit and allow this to settle. Yeah, so I'm gonna say we're probably right around in between six and a half and seven pH. For section three, peat moss is actually the perfect top dressing. I'll probably use peat moss mixed with topsoil for that part. Peat moss will lower the pH, make it more acidic, less alkaline. Vivian Hernandez asks, ah, good question, Vivian. What do you do with pet urine killing your grass? So well, after the, the grass has been killed, I just essentially treat it like a bare spot, you know, kind of just dig up the dead, the dead turf, put some little bit of topsoil, seed it, water it. As far as to stop the dogs from doing it in the first place, you know, there, I, there is nothing you really can do other than trying to encourage your dog to pee, you know, not on the lawn, pee, in, pee on a bush. Or every time the dog goes and pees on the lawn, you can go behind him with a garden hose and kind of just water it down a little bit. I mean, I've had several dogs, uh, especially we used to have a dog named Baxter, R.I.P. Baxter. He was a good dog, he was big. <laughs> but he just, he decimated grass. There's nothing you can do about it. We tried, we tried supplements, we tried lots of things. That's all I can really offer you. I mean, there is no real magic trick to fixing that problem. Okay, so the time has come to do the top dressing on our bare spots and our thin areas. Again, based on our pH test, we're not gonna be using that much peat moss, only gonna be using it over there in that corner, uh, mixed in with some topsoil. The rest of the areas that, it's, that are thin, I'm gonna be using just topsoil. This stuff is from Ace Hardware. It was pretty affordable. Uh, with the quarantine going on and everything, my uh, options for topsoil were a little bit limited. If you can go to a nursery, you know, in the future, if you can go to a nursery and get, just get a yard of it dumped in the back of your truck, that's definitely more affordable. Or you can get it by the bag, so up to you. Um, after we do this part, then we're gonna be doing overseeding and fertilizing. All right.
So time to do some fertilization and overseeding for the bare spots and well, actually for the whole whole yard. So what I'm gonna do this year is I'm gonna actually follow Melorganite's recommended procedure for overseeding and fertilization. This is a little bit new to me. I've done similar uh, procedures in the past, but this is gonna be the first time I'm doing it exactly this way. What they recommend is four parts Melorganite. Melorganite again is an organic non-burning fertilizer and then one part seeds. Seeds I'm gonna be using today is a high desert lawn mix. Go ahead and take a close look here and see exactly what types of seeds I'm going to be using so you know. Farm stores tend to have, at least in my experience, a better selection of seeds that are good for your local climate rather than going to Lowe's or Home Depot. Anyway, I'm going to be using this little milk jug here to measure out my four parts. So I'm going to dump in seeds first, then four parts Melorganite, mix it in. So my spreader here is a Scott's Turf Builder Edgeguard DLX, pretty standard spreader. Uh, Melorganite recommends a setting of 11 and a half if you want to do one pass around the yard. I want to do two passes going this way once and then the opposite way the next time. So I'm going to cut that setting down from 11 and a half down to five so I don't overdo it. After that, then I'm gonna go back and probably add in a couple, a little bit more extra seeds, just seeds by themselves in the most bare spots with either this spreader or a smaller one and probably rake it in a little bit. It's, sun burns my head, I'm gonna put my hat back on. <laughs> okay. All right, the sprinklers are running. You wanna to try to water at least once a day to make sure that the soil stays nice and damp while we let those new grass seeds establish. Also, I'm going to avoid mowing as long as possible, again, to give those new grass seeds a chance to establish themselves. To check out the results of the work we did today, go ahead and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. There I'll be posting update pictures on a regular basis for this project and many others. All right, that's it for today's project, but I did promise you all a sneak peek at the grand plan for our lawn. So uh, to do that, I need help from my wife, Amy. Hello, wife. Hello, everyone. <laughs> all right, let's, uh, let's walk around. Let's do this. Trees, yeah, so both you and I, we love shade trees. We love the character that trees provide. Yep. And so we do wanna fill this space in with some trees. Two trees, um, large ones kind of in the middle, then along the fence for kind of some privacy, a lower, more bushy-ish kind of tree. So here on the side of our house, what we want to do is we wanna create a garden bed area for vegetables. And that's probably the next project we're gonna be doing uh, as far as outdoor projects, right? Yes, <laughs> yes please. <laughs> Let's do that. And so what we wanna do here to separate the garden area from the front of the yard is put in a fence from that corner all the way down. And at the angle, just put in a gate that will um, allow access in and out from the front yard to the side and back. And Amy earlier there said front yard. Well, we don't really have a front yard yet. We have this crap. So eventually we're gonna, we're gonna incorporate a lot of what's already here because it is kind of nice, but we do want to plant a nice grass front yard, finally, because I really don't like rocks. Rocks are dumb. Let's move on. So in front of my shed here, we have my lovely uh, landfill uh, compost area. This is definitely not changing. Well, we do have to make compromises. I guess at some point I'm gonna be building a, a play area for the children's right here, a nice big thing. And then over there, I wanna do a timber frame kind of style uh, swing set. That sounds good. All right. Well, that's pretty much it for now. Um, but Amy, there does seem like there could be more out here. More? Yeah, I think there could be more. I think there could be a... Uh... What are you gonna to do to my pretty grass? What am I going to do to it? Yes, I'm letting him build a mini bike track. 
My lovely landscape yard is going to be a fun place. It's going to be landscaped really nice. It is. Promise. I, I swear. Promise me. I do swear it. It's going to be really cool. All right. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. Go ahead and uh, smash like buttons and all the other YouTube things you feel like doing, and I will see you guys next time. You're in my way. Get out of my way. Mark Ramsey asks, after aerating, should I mow the yard again to collect the plugs or should I just leave them to decompose? So Mark, if it were me, I'd probably just leave them. In my climate, um, when I aerated last fall, they decomposed fairly quickly. Within a several weeks, they were all gone. They broke up really quickly, didn't harm anything. I have heard though that if you live in a very rainy place, they can kind of cake, like kind of become muddy and cake and then kind of su smother the grass a little bit. So it's up to you, but most of the time I'd say you can just leave.